Welcome back. Author and RIT English professor Peter Lovenheim's book, In the Neighborhood, deals with how we got to know his neighbors after a murder-suicide. The work, in part, has inspired a new course at RIT called Narrative Nonfiction, Writing a Community. Today, three of his students are in our studio to talk about being in the class and the issues that have caught their interest and what they're doing for their final projects. With us this morning, Priska Edwards. She is an RIT student. Nice to meet you, Priska. Nice to meet you, too. Seated next to her is Danielle Strom, Hi. also from RIT. And next to Danielle, Scott Backus, also from RIT. Thanks for being with us this morning. So you are three of students in this class called, um, again, it's called Narrative Nonfiction, Writing a Community. Uh, can you explain to people at home what narrative nonfiction is? Any one of you? Who wants to take it? Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's, um, it's writing events that have actually occurred, um, but writing them in a form that's more accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an oral right. history. It's not a newspaper article. It's, it's a book. Yeah. It's a story. Right. So writing it more as a story instead of just the facts, ma'am, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, perhaps a newspaper article might read. Um, each of you has chosen a particular issue um, in the Rochester community to focus on as your final project in this class. Um, I want to ask you all, or each rather, what your topic is and why you chose it. Um, which of course this is the purpose of this class, is to kind of get you off campus and out into the community. Prisco, why don't we start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I picked an organization called Women Helping Girls, mm -hmm. and um, it really is focused on empowering young women through, the, through high schools in Rochester, through individual mentoring. Now, why did that kind of speak to you? Um, I think, like, I'm, I'm interested in, like, women's issues mm -hmm. and um, in the idea of empowerment, and I have myself benefited from different kinds of mentoring in the past, and I just think it's really important. Yeah. Now, your project includes, uh, you're a photojournalist student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you study this, and so that's actually part of your project. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've, you've taken several photographs. You've chosen a particular uh, duo yeah. from mm -hmm. Women Helping Girls. If we could actually take a look at some of those photos while you're describing them. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So this one right here, who's this? Um, this on the left there, that's Tracy Winter and Sade Woods, and they are a mentorship pair. And they started meeting about three years ago. Yeah. These photos, which we're going to take a look at here, kind of tell the story of their relationship. Tell me a little bit about how they got together and why you thought they were a fitting topic, a fitting subject. Yeah. Um, well, Tracy's been trying to get into a mentorship relationship in the past, and uh, some of them have fallen through just because the other mentee wasn't that as interested or able to, you know, commit to it. And um, Sade has been looking for a mentor as well, and they um, got together about three years ago through the Women Helping Girls. And um, Tracy has really helped Sade come more into the community, and Sade is interested in poetry and art, and Tracy takes her out to the different cultural centers um, in Rochester. Wow. And now... Um, through Tracy's mentoring and help, she's been able to build up more confidence and be able to speak out more. And she's trying to start do more with um, with poetry yeah. and even go into slam poetry. So. so they were finding, they were looking for each other, only they didn't realize it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then they yeah. found each other and they thought this is a perfect match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So women's studies is this something that you're interested in. Um, do you hope to do this one day, or do you hope to use you know this interest uh, perhaps and in, and kind of funnel it into a career? Yeah, I would. I mean, I, especially through. Um, through different photojournalist um, journalism opportunities, I would love to do that. And That's I think great. also, like, I would be interested in doing like something like this. Like, I think it's sure. it's really helping Chardonnay Documenting, and helps. Yeah, yeah, and it's really it's really a great thing. So, yeah. That's great, so. Danielle. Let's ask you, what's your topic about? I'm writing about uh, the value of community centers hmm. in the inner city of Rochester, um, particularly the North Street Community Center, which exists in the um, the Northeast Crescent, right. which we all know is has a lot of crime and violence. Yeah, and so the value of these community centers is an estimate. Like you, you can't place a value. Um, how? What have you found in your research about how they're uh, staffed and well, how they're doing? Community centers are not a mandated service, um, and so they're they're subject to a lot of budget cuts, um, and so they're existing on very little, mm -hmm. um, and they depend heavily on um, volunteers. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have a lot of volunteers, particularly at the North Street Community Center. Well, was it, why was that something that spoke to you that you, you thought, I want to document, I want to chronicle this part of our community? 
I think that uh, our community is separated. Um, there are a lot of people living in the outer ring suburbs, living on the fringes of Monroe County who maybe don't feel as connected or responsibility to the neighborhoods that exist in inner city Rochester. Um, I, I'm writing this article because I think that that's not the right perspective to have and that um, this is everybody's community. Everybody sure. who lives here has a responsibility to one another. Yeah. Without a vibrant center city, uh, you know, you can't expect uh, everyone else to kind of thrive as well. You need that vibrant center city. Scott, how about you? What, what's your topic? Um, for my project, I chose um, historical landmark preservation and uh, how that affects the Rochester community. Now, why that? Um, well, we I've have been... a lot of them here. We certainly have no <laughs> shortage of yeah. historic places. Yeah. Um, originally, I had been involved back at home in Buffalo with uh, some groups that preserved landmarks and kept them running and I really thought that was an important part of the community so uh, I want to see how that affected the Rochester community here. With uh, you know building new buildings you know downtown uh, the ESL Center and all of that uh, you like the old buildings that's what speaks to you right? Yeah I think they mean a lot to the community and they're really a place to rally around and be proud of and uh, in a place that can sometimes I don't know be overlooked overlooked yeah, or maybe overlooked. forgotten. I want to ask you a question. Doing this project, you had to get off campus. And you had to get out into the community. Um, we've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned about life in Rochester that you didn't know when you first started this project? Start over here. Priska. Okay, um, I think just keeping my eyes open just to see um, what kind of you know what kind of life there is in the in the city. I'm not from like I'm from a little bit north of Pittsburgh, but I don't go into the city all that often. Mm -hmm. So it was just seeing city life has just been amazing to me. How about you, Danielle? Uh, people live differently from neighborhood to neighborhood, and we need to access that. Yeah, and maybe capitalize on that instead of letting it separate us. Absolutely. Yeah. And how about you? I noticed that there's a lot of like support for this community and like a lot of from the ground up to build like a strong community. So that, a lot of grassroots organizations. Yeah, a lot of grassroots organizations that really work to make it a better place here. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that you got a, a good look at our city. Uh, and maybe you can take these lessons back, you know, to your own communities. Uh, or maybe you'll call Rochester home. You never know one day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. And I'd love to hear how your final projects went. Yeah. I'd like to read them if that's okay. Sure, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I won't have my pen. I won't be correcting or making oh, corrections. Thank goodness. I'll let Peter Lovenheim do that. Yeah.